Tuberculosis continues to be one of the world's biggest infectious diseases problem with more than 9 million cases every year and about 2 million deaths that happen globally. And despite the huge burden of TB and despite all the efforts at controlling TB, every year there are more and more cases that are reported from across the world made worse by the global HIV epidemic and the emergence of drug resistant TB. Right now there's an epidemic of TB ongoing in Nunavut which just emphasizes the importance of this disease, not just globally, but also in Canada. The TB community has realized that TB cannot be controlled with the existing tools that we have. Our existing vaccine uh, for, for TB, BCG, is more than 90 years old. Some of the diagnostics we're using today is more than 100 years old, and we haven't had a good new drug for TB in more than 50 years. So this realization that new tools, new drugs, vaccines, and diagnostics are critically important for eliminating TB made us realize that a resource like this can be helpful for at least two things. One is to better interpret and use new TB diagnostics that are already available, and two, to, to design new TB vaccines the, the test we used, uh, we have been using for a long, long time to check who has TB infection or not. It's a tuberculin skin test. It's a simple skin uh, test where we put TB antigens under the skin and then we look and see who's reacting to it, right? Now that is, is simple and straightforward, but the big problem is that you can have false positive test results, not just because of BCG vaccination, but it's influenced heavily by when in one's life one got the vaccine and how many doses of BCG one has been given. So for example, if one got the vaccine later in childhood or in adolescence, or if one got multiple shots of BCG, that really has a big negative impact on the skin test. We have new blood-based interferon gamma release assays which are completely unaffected by BCG. Regardless of who got the vaccine, how many shots they got, these tests work very well and they are blood tests so they are easier to use. Now countries where the BCG policy is such that the skin test will not work well could easily shift to these new assays. Now this information unfortunately is not available to a clinician. Uh, clinicians see immigrants, for example, from all over the world and immigrants often do not have their vaccination policy card with them or do not, they do not remember how many shots of BCG they got. So a clinician just, just go to their computer, click in on the name of the country and immediately know that this person has received several shots of BCG, therefore we probably should not use a skin test and use one of the specific blood tests. So that's one application. Second application is this, um, all sorts of uh, efforts are being made and millions of dollars are being spent on developing a new vaccine for TB. But most of these TB vaccines work well only on people who've already received BCG. So it's called first priming with BCG and then boosting with the new vaccine. So for that also, it's nice to know which countries are using BCG and what, so that the new vaccine, whenever it becomes available in future, can be more effectively employed. Alice, can you show me the BCG policy for Romania? There's a patient uh, um, who's from there and we need to know the vaccination policy. Sure. Here is the information for Romania. Uh, the Atlas um, was basically an effort to map how and what BCG vaccines are used across the, the whole globe. So the only way we could create that is to send questionnaires to people from all over the world or to search the literature and look at documents that have reported, given a lot of detailed information on BCG, and then our uh, uh, coordinator, Alice Zwerling, put them all together into a, an atlas, and then our coordinator or web programmer, Aman Verma, then created a beautiful map and a drop-down menu, which not only gives you the current BCG policies for many countries, but also how things have changed over time, what strains of vaccines are used, how often is the vaccine given, and what is the TB incidence in the country. So all of that data is available in one single place, free of cost. And that's, I think, a big contribution we've made.